In the shadow of the Rocky Mountains, Wade's crew is moving a huge historic bank. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But a massive 100 tons of weight. Way too heavy for one roller. And a 28-foot high roof. Yeah, not happening. Could turn their shortest move. Whoa, 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 whoa. Broke a block. The workload just gets bigger every minute. Into their biggest nightmare. They're f***ing her falling over. Ever think of moving to the country? Then this is the crew to call. No! Hey, that's so slow! Pull up on your passenger side. They'll move your dream home to your dream location. Hey, hey! But it won't be easy. Oh, guys! Oh, hold it, hold it! No! Even for the world's toughest. Oh. Cabin truckers. Nestled in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains lies Pincher Creek. It's a small town rich in history. Colleen Sear is a longtime resident and local historian. She runs the Kootenai Brown Pioneer Village, an authentic frontier museum made up of a number of historical buildings. The buildings were moved, restored, and filled with thousands of artifacts belonging to the town's pioneers. It's made to represent the pioneer history of Aboriginal times right up until now. Pre-1800 is well represented, but now it was time to get into that 19th century. Colleen's found the perfect addition to the collection, the Imperial Bank of Commerce, one of the biggest and oldest buildings in all of Pincher Creek. It, you know, we've been six months in the planning to get this done. I know a lot of other buildings that we've had come here have taken a lot longer but none of them have been more exciting than this because of the, the sheer size of the project. The building is over 100 years old and is extremely fragile. They'll need to move it fast or the current owner will have it demolished for a new development. This is a big event for a rural community such as Pincher Creek. You don't always get an opportunity like this to preserve an important chapter of our local history. So physically, it's a big move. Historically, it's a big move as well. Amazingly, this monster-sized bank was moved to its current location 25 years ago by none other than Wade's father, Joe Kerner. When Wade's dad was here, he was watching every aspect of that move. He was at everybody who was doing the work and on the shovel. He was there watching what they were doing and putting in his knowledge. To watch it coming down the street was quite a feat because I'd never seen a building this size being moved before. Little ones, yes, but not this. <laughs> it's Monday morning, and with so much history in the balance, there's only one crew for this epic move. And the guys from Wade's house moving and heavy hauling are getting ready. Last time Wade's moved the bank, crew boss Kelly was behind the wheel. We moved the bank there in Pincher 25 years ago with my father. We didn't have the equipment we have today, so with a lot of manual labor, swinging sledgehammers, and uh, we had to tear the whole building down with jackhammers. It was slow. I think it took us a whole week to load it. Yeah, it was a lot of hard work. <laughs> Moving the bank thing was a big deal. It was a big undertaking there, so we moved very slow because it was heavy and took our time to make sure that we had no issues. So funny to look back 25 years ago where the safety procedures and things like that were a little bit different. Like they would, you know, somebody would just walk across the sidewalk with their baby in their stroller and looking at the site and it was quite interesting. I'm on my way to uh, Pinch Creek. I need to go out there and uh, double check the road out there. I'm gonna run out there and just uh, measure the bridge, double check the uh, trees and everything that's around there and make sure we can get down the street without any problems. Wade can leave nothing to chance, so he's going to do the scout himself. Wade's crew will pick up the bank at its present location and then haul it six blocks to the Kootenai Brown Pioneer Village. Although this move is just a few blocks, there will be many challenges, including an extremely narrow bridge, tree-lined streets, a maze of power lines, and a tight squeeze leading into the bank's final destination. When Wade starts his scout, he's in for a surprise. That's 25 to there. This bank move is going to be a tall order. 
at almost 30 feet high, the bank will clash with the street lights. Yeah, not happening. Not happening at all. Definitely need to deal with them lights. There's probably only 26 feet there, and I need 30, 31, so two of the overheads are going to have to be down for sure. But uh, it's something I'm definitely going to have to take care of, though. So another problem I'll need to solve. I'm pretty sure it all looks good, but wow, there is a ton of lines, so tell you what, them guys will be lifting and dropping lines for a better portion of the morning for now, I'm sure. And things get even worse at the entrance to the village. Like, we ain't fitting through fucking here. It's 30-some fucking feet wide. We're not even going to fit in here. We're going to have to do a lot of fancy shit to make this work. And I don't know. My eyes aren't that fucking crooked, but the basement's way out of whack, too. Look at this corner and that down there. There's probably an inch and a half. Son of a bitch. Francis Sear, Colleen's husband, arrives at the drop site to go over the plan with Wade. Hi. Hi, Wade. How are you today? Good, how are you? Oh, no, no problems. Well, problems, but nothing we can't solve. Well, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's good. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to chat a little bit about the basement and uh, the yard here and make sure we're all, yeah. we're all good with what uh, needs to be done. We won't fit in between these two buildings. I think you will. Uh, if this is out of here, we'll make it through here, no problem. There's a hole under here. Well, wow. yeah. The workload just gets bigger every minute. For Wade, a move that started as a trip down memory lane has turned into a potential nightmare. It's just a little bit tight with a big truck on the front of that building and 50-foot oh, beams underneath there. It's, yeah, I know. It's definitely not for the faint of heart, by no means. OK, well, I've seen what I need to then. OK. Thanks again. You bet. They told me the basement was going to be like two feet off the ground, and it's closer to four or five. Just makes it a little scarier for rolling it on, being it's big and heavy. The tightness, the hole in the ground. I don't know. Never know. It could show up. There could be something else. They might put a dirt pile right in the middle of that fucking yard. Who knows? At the drop site, Wade has encountered a host of problems. Son of a bitch. In order to prep for the big move, Colleen is leaning on members of the community who have come out to help. We're going to take the fire escape off in case it creates problems going down the street. Look at this whole thing. I don't even know if we need tools. Anything not attached to the foundation will have to be removed. And you're not able to do that in the city, but in a little town, like you can go down the street with that. <laughs> the fragile stairs are going ahead to the village where they will wait for the rest of the bank to arrive. It's Tuesday morning, and the crew roll up to start the bank job. It's a nice building, huh? Nice old bank. I wish it was full of money. I'll take it home. For Wade's crew, moving this bank 25 years later is really special. So they've given Colleen a generous discount and brought the whole family. My great grandpa moved this bank like 25 years ago, and Grandpa and Kelly and Wade, this is one of his first moves, so I'm pretty excited. This is a big deal. Tyler's also here with us, Wade's son, so it's me and him. It's sort of a family crew today. You know, it's it's actually a huge honor knowing that my dad and his brothers did this and I know it's really special for him that I'm here and helping out, so I think it'll be pretty cool. Last time Wade's moved this bank, they took a week to lift it. This time, the boys are ready to roll in just 10 hours. I know you're an old hand at this, Kelly, but take good care of this building. I will be really careful with it. Hopefully it doesn't fall off our game into the river. Thank you very much for that. The crew hasn't moved an inch, but the first obstacle is already in sight. Up ahead is a bridge rated to hold 101 tons, but the bank is 100 tons. They need to crawl across the bridge and hope their 109-year-old relic doesn't end up in the river. Ready to pull her out and get her on their own. Bring them out of there. Police, Michelle, straight ahead. Half a block into the move, it's showtime.
we're up to this bridge, so it's going to be real tight. We're going to have to do some expert guidance. The bridge holds, and the crew make it across. But they're not out of the woods yet. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah, back up a little bit. Okay, well, come ahead now, other way. It's really exciting, really. I can't believe they just bumped that little light up there, and then they can just back up and take another route like they were driving a tricycle. <laughs> you can start cutting her now, Michelle. One block down, just a few to go. Next challenge, squeeze through a narrow corridor of trees. Okay, now come back. Come straight ahead like that. Let's go straight like that, yeah? The trees are city property. Any damage could cost the weights thousands. It's a little tight, you know? Trees on both sides. People on both sides. Got three more blocks to go. Gonna catch a fourth branch here, but can I go that way? Now for the most dangerous part of the move. Yeah. Up ahead is a spider web of power lines. Yeah. The police have blocked the road so the power company can deal with the problem. She's tall and big. They can't lift any line, you know, they gotta drop them. While the crew waits, Michelle picks up a new passenger. I get to deliver this building all by myself or with Michelle. <laughs> Even with the power lines cleared, it's a very tight squeeze. There's hazards everywhere. All them overhangs like the light standard they're really close to this building and the trees on the both sides, it's pretty tight. With Kelly and his team making good time, the local volunteers are doing last minute alterations. One corner might be a quarter of an inch. We ground the concrete down and uh, it's all perfectly level now. When the bank finally arrives, Kelly spots a big problem. No, 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 back. The 100-ton bank is nearly at the drop zone, but a street lamp is causing trouble. Dump your, uh, yeah, they're gonna have to move it. 100 meter from the basement, you know? But it's, it's not there till it's there, you know? Just as the crew think they're home free, they spot a low-hanging street lamp. If they hit it, they could drag the power lines down and start a domino effect that will leave the town in the dark. Uh, there's a light that um, we didn't take down we thought we were gonna fit, so we'll just have to get a truck in here and pull that light off and then we'll be able to scooch through. Well, I gotta wait till tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Well, that was a tight scenario. Good thing they were paying attention, we would have smacked it right off. With the street light removed, the crew now inches its way towards the new foundation. It's gonna be a little tight here because of this, the old shell building here in the bush. Go to your driver's side hard for a minute. They're only a few feet from their landing site. Going up on the mat. But now, they have to cross the hole where the shed used to be. I wonder if that matting's gonna hold us. They make it through with minimal damage. There's a decorative corner on the house there, and that, that fell off on the bushes, but everything else worked great. It's been a long day, and the crew parks for the night. The next morning, they return to finish the job. But as they back the bank up to the foundation, they get boxed in. There's so many trucks in here. I hope nothing goes wrong. Kelly decides to hook the picker crane under the truck so he can swing it around to line up the back end. Good, move out of the way. It's a good start to the day, but the crew is about to go down a man. I gotta go, I got a funeral to be at two o'clock. I gotta run to Tabor. Twinkie and Michelle are gonna be in charge here. I gotta be careful and uh, they should be okay. It's gonna be an interesting afternoon for sure. Without Kelly here, we'll see how it goes, you know. Kelly's got like 40 years, 50 years experience in, in house moving, you know? So it's always nice to have somebody who really knows shit, you know? So right now we're just uh, blocking our wheels. We're gonna flip them around. We're gonna back up right against the basement. We're gonna roll it right on. With all this maneuvering, the crew must be alert.
hard to the bathroom here. Bring her back. Oh, you're okay. Just keep her cut hard there. Whoa. Good. We're good here. Next job is to build the piles of wooden blocks for the hydraulic jacks to sit on. Then they can lift the bank off the dollies. We need some one inch to go into these blocks. Hold up there. We just got to block this roller higher so we're level. How's that level look? A hundred tons of weight is making the towers wobble. With the bank resting on wooden towers, the dollies are removed. It's now time to start the slide over the foundation. Uh, we got a roller that's not spinning, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Just keep an eye on it! Whoa, 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 whoa. Broke a block. We just broke a block under a roller because of the weight of the building. I guess it wasn't safetyed up, so it broke. When a block breaks like that, we got to go up with jacks, with hydraulics, and uh, replace it, you know? How's it looking there? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tricky. Way too heavy for one roller. Just, they don't spin at all. At over 100 tons, this bank is too heavy for the rollers. As the crew slides the building, the rollers lock up, putting massive pressure on the blocks. If they fail, it could send the bank crashing into the foundation. We gotta put two rollers in each pile. The crew tries to solve the problem by adding more rollers. We got eight rollers in place for this heavy bastard. There's just one way to find out if it's worked. Look at they're knowing what they're doing because it's all beyond me and all that. It's looking pretty good. A little slow and it's heavy. We're just doing it as safe as possible right now. How are them piles looking? They're leaning a little bit. The bank slowly creeps across the foundation. Right now it's looking a little funky. It doesn't look the, the levelest. There's little humps everywhere, but we'll see once we get closer. We're about two thirds of the way across the basement, and uh, I think we're going to shut her down. I'm not feeling the best, and then I, I can't deal with this stress. The crew arrives the next morning to finish the job. Crew boss Kelly is back and finds the fragile old building in a precarious position. You see, the front two piles are leaning hard towards the front wall. Leave that there. You can't teeter on these piles. Look at these front two piles. They're fucking they're falling over. This is when shit gets real. The bank is almost twice the weight of an average house, so the crew needs to reinforce the wooden piles for extra support. The top part is level now. It's just all down here where it's kind of funny looking. They could have left it a little better, but whatever. Yesterday, uh, Kelly had to leave. He had a funeral to attend to. But uh, this morning, he's back, so we're back on track, you know? It's got to finish rolling back about another 15 feet, square it right up, and uh, set our jacks and let her down. Easy! My roller's not rolling! Let's be careful right here. A lot of shit going on that could go wrong. As the bank begins to slide, one of the wooden towers starts to lean. Oh, it did go over quite a bit, eh? Oh, yeah. I thought I could hear it going. <laughs> need a skinny one, though. The crew adds even more blocks to reinforce the towers. And finally, they get this big old bank under control. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Get that banker rolling. <laughs> The last part of the roll here. A little more. How's that? Whoa. This is happening today. And it's just, it's been a job all year and just such a rewarding day. We're just tagging the bank right now, so we gotta go along the crowbars and pry the siding out so it doesn't tuck under. And I'm pretty excited. And hopefully get the hell out of here. 
Go up, pull the rollers out. Touch them. Woo! It worked! <laughs> It's sitting on the basement right in place. Farley. Hi, Kelly. Thanks for all your work. You did a fantastic job in all, all right, that. So you bet. We're really pleased with the building. It looks great. She's a nice old building. It is. Fortis and all the power guys really put us through real fast. That made our day pretty easy. There was a few challenges, but it all fell into place here. That makes it a great move. Moving this building here was such a team effort. Our whole board came to the table with their shovels and their drills and their, their tools to make the thing happen, because we had a very short time to get it done, and it worked. It was a lot of work, but you know it was worth it. We really feel happy about it, we're satisfied, and we're also pretty proud of ourselves. A huge building, a 100-ton building, a building that the Kerner family moved like uh, 25 years ago. And now with the fourth generation, we just moved that building again. It was a good move, and everything went smooth and nice. And now it's time to go home and get ready to do another one. The Waits family have now moved this bank twice, and both times were epic challenges. This building is so amazing that it arrived here after all the trials and tribulations it's been through in its history. I think that the architecture on this building must have been absolutely awesome when it was built. It's really going to be a spectacular project when we're all finished with it, because it means a lot to the community, this being a piece of commercial history available in Pincher Creek, and now, rather than being demolished, it'll be brought here to the museum where it'll be looked after forever and appreciated by the public. <laughs>